and I'm so glad you're here. I am coming to you from Frame and Fiber, which is my picture framing and yarn shop in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Thanks for being here. Today is May 20th, and it is the 20th day of my May Live a Day 2022 challenge, where I go live every day in the month of May. Almost every day. So this week I've been doing a series of videos about picture framing and what I do here at the frame shop. So I hope you're interested. I'm hoping you're finding these videos interesting or helpful. If you have any picture framing questions at all, pop them down in the comments or you can you know, find me anywhere on social media. I say anywhere, really it's just YouTube and Instagram, but anyway leave me a message or a comment and let me know your thoughts and if you have any questions about picture framing um yeah and i hope they've been helpful so i am a picture framer <laughs> sometimes i just assume you know that because of my backdrop <laughs> but i am a picture framer um i picture frame all types of things anyway any anything two-dimensional three-dimensional um, and I do it here in my studio. I do it for people who are local. So they walk into my shop and I meet them here at my framing counter. I also do it for people who are not local. So we meet on Zoom or there's a couple ways I do it. I should say that. We don't, I don't always meet with people on Zoom, but basically if you need picture framing and you are not local, shoot me an email and I can help you with that. We can either do it through videos and photographs or we can make up an appointment on Zoom. So yeah, today's video. Hey Lisa, how are you my dear? I need to get back to you. I feel like there was something did you text me and I didn't get back to you? I need to get back to you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I do not like going live, by the way. Once this May Live A Day is over, hello, my friend. Hi, Sue. Aw, Lisa and Sue are here. I'm so excited. Um, yeah, I don't love going live. I think because it feels too um, on the spot. So I get lost in my mind and I don't really think that I come across, well, who knows how I come across. I don't think I get the things that are in my brain to come out my mouth the way I want them to. And then I feel all like, I don't know, just I get mixed up and I lose my train of thought. So I prefer to do videos where I can edit. Ah, uh, but you're here now, so I'm glad you're not missing them. Yay! Plus, they're just boring. It's just me. You know everything you need to know about me. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. That was for Sue. Not for you guys if you're watching the replay. Yes, please. Hang out still. <laughs> so, anyway, this video is all about um, picture framing lingo. Hi, Tina. How are you? I'm so glad to see you here. Ah, oh, Tina, you're just the biggest cheerleader on the planet. <coughs> Pardon. See? And then I cough and I can't edit that out. I like editing. <laughs> um, so yeah, lingo. There's lots of words and phrases that are used to describe anything in picture framing and art in general. And I've noticed over the years that people get really like mixed up and also nervous to come into a frame shop because they don't know any of the words or the definitions and they don't know if they're using the words correctly. So if you are one of those people who are intimidated by picture framing because you think you need to have all of this knowledge, let me tell you something. You don't need any of that knowledge. Your picture framer needs the knowledge. <laughs> Hi, Marla. Thanks for joining. Um, for real, it's your picture framer. And if you don't know what something means, by all means, ask. I know in a couple of these videos, I kind of geeked out a little bit. And so I may have said some things that you're like, yeah, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm more than happy to answer all of those questions. So definitely ask me if I say anything that's bizarro um, or that you just don't understand. I say lots of bizarro things. Um, so that said, uh, going back to the I don't love doing live videos, 
doing these live videos and talking about some of the stuff I've talked about made me realize that I need to do actual videos on some of these topics. So that's good. All right, so let's talk about a couple things that you've probably heard thrown around that you might not know what they mean. So the first thing, I, and the first thing let's talk about, um, we've got the, oh no. I'm sorry, you have the, I love that little emoji. I'm assuming you have COVID. <laughs> feel better, pal. Or if it's a cold or the flu, feel better. Um, <clears throat> I have allergies right now and they're driving me bananas. Um, okay, I don't know what order I wanna go in. All of these words have so many things to do with each other. So a lot of people get confused between the use of preservation and conservation. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad to keep you entertained, Tina. <laughs> There's always bloopers. <coughs> so preservation and conservation are words that people tend to use simultaneously or they use them as synonyms. And they can be used that way. But preservation is kind of like the bigger word and conservation falls underneath it. So preservation, preserving, you are, we are as the picture framers, um, our responsibility and job if we are doing preservation framing is to keep whatever you've brought into us in the, uh oh, what's the word I'm looking for? In the condition that it's in when you bring it in. So there's lots of materials that we have that help us do that. Conservation is a little bit more than that. And conservation is taking something that's been damaged um, or something that's, well, yeah, let's just say damaged and leave it at that. Um, I, mean, I guess it could be other words, but damaged. Uh, and then either repairing it or restoring it. A lot of times when it comes to conservation in that definition, um, I work with a gentleman who is a restorator, a restorator. His business is restoration. He restores oil paintings, watercolors, and he works on paper. And then he also restores old picture frames, like picture frames that are super valuable. Um, and so those are really like, that's the major difference between those two words. You can use them like people mix them up all the time and it's not a big deal um, because ultimately both of those things if you are conserving something after it's conserved the picture framer is preserving it right so it's all down to preservation um i'm trying to think if there's anything else no i think that's that's a pretty good simple definition of those two words so then when it comes to the conservation or the preservation of your work, a lot of people, everything must be acid free. But I don't know if people really understand that there's different levels of acid free and they're acid free is not equal across the board. So acid free anything just means that whatever it is that is acid free has had its um, pH either at neutral or higher. So above, I think seven is neutral. So it's higher. They, a lot of times materials are processed chemically to be made acid free. So it's acid free. This is where like framers and conservators and restorators get really, um, <laughs> there's like so many little debates. But you can take, let's take, let's just talk paper. Paper can be made from wood pulp. Wood pulp is then chemically processed to be acid free. Once that pulp is made acid free, made into paper, it is then buffered with a calcium carbonate, which helps to maintain the acid free qualities. So, my mind was always like, wait, if so, if that's maintaining it, how is it acid free then if, right? So I don't know. <laughs> that's the part.
part that I always like I'm, I'm interested in. Um, the so that's called buffering the the paper or the map board. Um, so basically, it just lessens the effects of the acids in the environment, the atmosphere, and or the pieces that's being framed. Because don't forget, my acid-free everything is surrounding your acid-filled artwork. So don't forget, there's still acid in your framing packet. This is a framing packet. Okay, then there's archival. Acid-free is not necessarily archival, and that's something to really understand. Um, there is, and I believe it is wood pulp, but I think it's a certain type of wood pulp. It's called virgin, alpha virgin cellulose. Basically, it's pulp that has been, um, the pH has been brought up to a certain level. Um, it's been buffered, but it's a higher standard of, I mean, you know what, I wrote down dates for you guys, um, so you could understand this too. Um, did I write it down? Shoot. Oh yeah, I did, I did, okay. So your first level of acid-free, which is made from wood pulp or average wood pulp, um, that's meant to last anywhere from five to 25 years. Then the second tier, which is your archival, because it's using alpha cellulose, is guaranteed, they say guaranteed, I don't, I'm not guaranteeing, they, the powers that be, guarantee it, um, anywhere from 50 to 125 years, um, which is great for that's the that's the base that I use. I don't use anything acid free that is less than an archival um, quality because I'm framing things for people. It's my responsibility to make sure that they get the best that they can for their money. And honestly, anything less than that is not worth your money. So that's why everything I do is um, that archival level. Then inside that archival umbrella is museum quality um and that is across the board the material is made with 100 percent cotton rag i'm sure you've heard that term a lot watercolor paper is made out of that cotton papers are a lot more um, they're stronger and they last longer than wood paper so they are more expensive for sure, but they're beautiful and they last, I'm going to say indefinitely because, um, as, I'm sorry, um, cotton rag is by nature um, acid free. Like there's, it's, it's pH is above neutral. It's made that way, way in nature. So nothing has to be processed that you can, they can make the paper straight from the cotton. So just know that too. Um, when you do something that's not with the cotton rag, it has to be chemically altered and processed in order for us to use it. So that's a lot about that. But I feel like that's one of those important ones to understand um, because people don't really know all of the differences. Um, so it's not all created equal. If you have questions about what I just said, if I wasn't clear, please ask me down below. Um, okay, and then I want to talk to you guys a little bit. I have two, my three words, three buzzwords that my customers always use. And they're not necessarily meaning what they're saying because they don't really know, like, either the definition or the why of what we, why these words are used. Um, so the first one is, or it's two words that people mix up modern and contemporary always mixed up and i get it because you think oh modern as in today and contemporary as in today so it's the same thing right it doesn't matter but in design it does matter only because modern is a set era of time it's a specific design style the modern um, design like design period was probably from like the 1930s to the 1970s. So in there, the millennials right now are like totally stoked on everything from like that era. That's like the major um, theme right now in picture framing. Everyone wants very 
modern style, modern reproduction. Contemporary is not a style. Contemporary actually means the here and now. The trends that are super popular. Um, sorry, my leg hurts. Oh, and um, the current trends and the popular styles, basically. So those are very different. Um, and when people come in and say modern, I generally need to ask them some questions to understand that, oh, they're not really looking for, you know, a 1950s mint frame. <laughs> they're looking for something sleek and right now everyone, and I shouldn't say everyone's coming in with modern style. Like people are coming in with all different styles, but the overall style of the several of what people are looking for is like very simple frame, very simple matting, that kind of stuff. So anyway, that's the difference between modern and contemporary. Um, another word that people use all the time, and it kind of makes me giggle. Um, people come in and they always like want something framed, but they want it framed authentically. And it makes me laugh because authentic, right, is like to be real, relevant, um, true. But a lot of times what people are framing is not actually authentic. They want it to be a reproduction of something authentic. So that one's always like a funny one that kind of makes me giggle and I sometimes have to. And here's the thing too, sometimes when people want something authentic, especially if we're talking style wise, like if someone comes in and wants something arts and crafts style or a modern style, those styles were very, um, very, they can be very simple, but a lot of it had to do with the quality of the materials. And so that can be really expensive which is authentic, <laughs> except sometimes that's not what people are looking for. Sorry, this little hair is driving me nuts. Okay, the last word that people use, literally every day I hear this word, every day. It's either used in a sentence like, um, I really wanna make that color pop, or I want this to pop off the wall, or, you know, oh, there's some red in there, I wanna make the red pop out. So, pop all the time. Hello, Walter, how are you? Thanks for being here. Um, yeah, so that word makes me laugh because it means so many different things depending on who you are. Um, and a lot of times people think if they want a specific color to pop out of the um, artwork or if it's a color that they wanna accentuate. So say you have a landscape and it's like greens and meadow and like so it's lots of greens and blues but then every once in a while there's like the red of poppies right you can you can see that in your mind's eye right and so everyone i shouldn't say everyone most of the people who come in with that type of a scenario they want the red to be what pops off and so they always ask to see a red mat or a red frame. And if you want those poppies to pop, you do not want the red frame or the red mat because now your eye is looking at the red of the poppies, the red, of, like it's looking all over at the red. You want, if you want a color to pop anywhere, you want that to be the color. So if you have that field, you're going to go with, oh, good. Happy Friday to you, too. You're going to go with a greenish tone or I got, let's just say a cool tone. You're going to go with the greens or the blues, you know, some like pale whites. Um, and that will make that red color be the thing that your eye goes to first. So just remember that if you want something in your picture to be the focal point, do the complement to that. Or if you don't want to do the complement, because sometimes the complement colors together, depending on what it is, can be a little intense. So sometimes, like say, let's talk about those poppies again. Um, you know, if you want those poppies to still be what we focus on, but you don't want to add too much color 
that neutral palette would be perfect too. Um, how's that sound? <laughs> I hope all that was fun to listen to. Uh, I probably could break all of those things into separate videos with like, this is the other reason why I don't love live is because I can't really have examples. Like I love editing, so I would be able to like push me over to the side and like, or like voice over with like examples. So I feel like talking about things visually like this would be easier for you guys to see if you could literally see it. Um, yeah. How's that sound? Good? Okay. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me and being here for all of my live videos. Um, and all those ums, I get stuck in my mind, I'm telling you guys. Thanks for being here. And I don't remember what tomorrow is. Oh, you know what tomorrow is? I do remember. I should keep my notes here or look at them. They're on my phone. Tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about framing tips that you guys can use at home. So if you're doing your own picture framing, I can give you some tips because there's lots of tips that I've learned doing this over the years that definitely would help you guys at home. So on that note, happy Friday. I hope you have a lovely evening and I'll see you tomorrow.